cosine y equals 20x to the fourth. So far, so good? Let's get rid of this nasty piece of junk. What are we going to do with that? Yeah, just divide it. This is being multiplied, correct? So if we divide both sides by that, so divide here, divide here, we're dividing by this expression, we get dy dx equals 20x to the fourth, cool, over this same expression, 6y cosine y. Is it really too hard? Not really. Not too bad. It'll get harder when we start doing some other rules in there, which we're about to start right now, and you just see that. Uh, but in general, the calculus is going to be very similar. Very similar stuff you've done, as long as you remember what. What's the important piece of information here? Yeah, you've got to have a dy dx. That's the important piece of information. Um, what sort of practical application do we have if, if we're trying to find, like, the first thing we did was for a circle? Sure. Why, why would you want to find the top half derivative of the, of the circle and the bottom half using it? Well, if you, I mean, those things exist in real life, right? So if we somehow need to find a tangent line to those, we can do it. So we can actually find tangent lines to these weird curves, which aren't even functions, not functions. We can still find derivatives of that. Uh, it's going to come back at you later in calculus, too, uh, for, for when you have more than those variables, right? I mean, so you're, you're going to have use for this later on, is what I'm trying to say. Can I answer your question? Is it for something where you have, a, you're, you're, you have a multi variables and you're holding one constant and you're trying to solve? You can. You, you can actually do partial derivatives, um, things like that. I don't know if, if that's, I forgot if that's the same thing as implicit, if you, if you use that in that context, I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that this is useful for finding those derivatives and the slopes of just any curve. In fact, if you really think about it, finding any curve that you want, uh, you've been doing this the whole time. If I give you an explicit derivative or an explicit function, y equals 3x squared, I think I've used it a couple times. If you take the derivative of both sides, which is actually what you've been doing, check it out. You have d dx of y equals d dx of 3x squared minus 4. Now this, since it's a function in terms of x, is 6x. This, that's a function in terms of x, isn't it? Derivative gives you dy dx. You've actually been doing it the whole time. You've been doing implicit. It's just been nicely solved for you the whole entire time. That's kind of neat, right? So is there applications for implicit differentiation? Yes, because you've been doing it this entire time. Uh, implicit just comes about because sometimes you can't solve for y, and that's why we have it. Still means the same thing. Still a derivative, just you cannot solve that for y. Good question. Are you ready to move on? Are there any other questions on this before we do? Are you having fun yet? Isn't that kind of cool, right? I think it's cool. You're making headaches. Mm, no, no, that's later. <laughs> no, no, that's this chapter. It's coming up. Don't worry. Thanks. Sure. See, it looks simple. It looks simple. It looks simple. <laughs> Why do I have two Huh? Implicit, explicit. What was this? Implicit. Definitely implicit because the Y is not by itself. Can you take an implicit derivative of this? What is Y? A function of X. What happens when you take a derivative of X, which is a function of X, times Y, which is a function of X? You see the product rule? Gotta have the product rule. So what we can't do, we can just go, oh, x is 1, y is dy dx. Yay, I'm done. Because then dy dx would equal 1, right? And that's, that's not the case. In fact, if you were to solve this, what you're going to get is negative 1 over x squared. That's what that is. Because if you divide by x, you get 1 over x, root of that, that's x to negative 1 power, bring that down, subtract 1 from it, you get negative 1 over x squared. Do you see that, what I'm talking about? That's got to be the same derivative. So here, when you have the product rule, yeah, you got to use it. That's a function of x times a function of x. So sure, we're going to take a derivative of both sides, and you let your, your d dx kind of do the work for you. You just follow that down. d dx of 1. What, what's d dx of 1? 0. So don't forget about that. You always take the derivative of both sides. d dx of x times y, that's a function of x times a function of x, and that implies the product rule. So we go, okay, let's do derivative of the first 
times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Why don't you help me out with this, folks? Uh, you tell me, what's the derivative of x with respect to x? One. Good. And what else do I have? Y. Do I need a dy dx here? No. no. Did I take the derivative of y? No. Then no, you don't need it. Uh, plus, I know this x doesn't change. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? Dy dx. Yeah, that's kind of nice, right? Can you solve for dy dx? Are you okay on getting that far? Okay, solve for dy dx, what do we do? Subtract y. So x dy dx equals negative y. Good, divide by x, because that's being multiplied right now. If you divide by x, you get dy dx equals negative y over x. Now, I made you the guarantee that this is going to be one over, negative 1 over x squared, and this is not negative 1 over x squared. This is negative y over x squared. Why is that? Well, because I solved this derivative by using implicit. If I had made this explicit, which you could do easily, that's 1 over x. True? Y equals 1 over x. If I plug in 1 over x, well, I get negative 1 over x over x over 1, flip it, reciprocate, you're going to get negative 1 over x squared, which is the same exact derivative. That's the same thing. Now, this is one of the rare cases where you could make your implicit function into explicit and do it the same way. I'm just giving you this as a kind of a for instance, that when you see this, you need the product rule. Like, can you see the product rule here? Okay. So do you need to do this? No. No, 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 you don't. This is a valid answer when you're doing implicit. This is just fine. This is what I'm looking for, as a matter of fact. So don't forget about the product rule. You've got to see the product rule. Well, I don't know if this is fun or not. It's fun for me. I love this stuff. Uh, but do you understand it is really the main thing. It's what I care about. Whether you find it fun, honestly, I don't care. I would hope you do. Uh, but I care that you get it. Do you get it? Just a practice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't expect you to get this out on the first go. I mean, if you do, great, and you're able to do all of them, sure. But yeah, there's going to be some tough ones in there that you are going to have to practice. Right? <coughs> I also need to show you this. Um, can you, could you, could you take the derivative of that? Hey, why don't you practice that right now? Go ahead and find the derivative. Find dy dx. Do you need a product rule for this problem? No. Thankfully. Thankfully, no. Okay, so that becomes 6x, that becomes 2y. Did you get the dy dx? If you lose the dy dx, you get lost on the problem, right? Because then you don't have a derivative to solve for, and you're like, what am I supposed to do now? That doesn't make any sense at all. So you have to have those dy dx's. That stands for your derivative. Did you make it that far? Everybody, have a show of hands. Some people made it that far. Good, OK. Now we solve for it. Solving for it says, well, actually, it'd probably be nice if I added this to both sides and divided by 2y, but I'm guessing most of you subtracted 6x and divided by negative 2y. You still get the same answer, but you have to divide by negative. I guess that doesn't matter. Negative 6x, if we divide by negative 2y, you're going to get positive. <coughs> Did you get positive 3x over y? Yes. Everybody. Great. Now, unfortunately, this is not the question I'm asking you for. 
Yay. That's the question I'm asking for. Uh, okay. Second. A second derivative. Now, can you take a second derivative of this thing? Of course you can. But in order to take a second derivative, yes, you have to solve for the first derivative. So, well, to do it correctly, you have to solve for the first derivative. So we solve for the first derivative. The second derivative just says, hey, check this out, this is kind of neat. Why don't you just take a derivative of both sides? So, so go ahead and, and do that. Can we take a derivative of both sides? Watch how, how to accomplish this. If we derive both sides, we get d, dx, dy dx equals d dx 3x over y. Can we start with the easy side first? Firstly? Easy side first. A, der a derivative of a derivative gives you a second derivative, and you're going to see the notation come into play. Do you see this? Look at how many d's do you have? 2d. Two. Two so d squared y. Remember where that comes from? Okay, cool. Over, the only one that doesn't work is this d. You don't get d squared x squared. It really should, if you wanted to do that, it should be like that. We just never show that. Uh, this becomes d x squared, and that's where you get the notation for a second derivative. Are you seeing where that notation is kind of coming from? It's cool, I guess. If you're me, it's cool. I don't get out much. What are you going to have to do for this? Use the quotient rule. Go ahead, set up the quotient rule. You know the quotient rule now. Go ahead and do it. Just everywhere, it's easy. It's an easy derivative. Just everywhere you see a derivative of y, you have to put dy dx. Don't forget about that. And then you're fine. I make it sound so well, easy when I'm doing it. I said, and then you're fine. Oh, before that. Seen, yeah. Use the quotient rule, sure. Set that up. Everywhere where you take a derivative of y, you need a dy dx. What I tell you to do, low d high minus high d low. Okay, so low <coughs> d high minus high d low. Again, not to be confused with CeeLo. CeeLo is the guy with glasses on the voice. Uh, very cool show. Love that show. All over bottom squared. I guess I could use parentheses there as well. Did you set up the quotient rule correctly? So that, that stuff's not going to change. I've taught you, I told you there's only three rules. I've taught you all three rules. Now it's just applying them. So do I put a, do I take the derivative of that y? No. No. So this is going to be y times, do I need a dy dx? For this one, for this one. No, because I'm not taking the derivative of y. That's going to be three minus 3x times, what's this going to become? There it is. Perfect, y squared. That gives you, if we clean this up just a little bit, 3y minus 3x dy. Now wait a second. Uh, this is weird, because I have a derivative, and I have a that's strange. Do I want to solve for that? No. No. The reason why you don't want to solve for that, look at the board. Have you already solved for that? How much is that 